In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the image-based lighting workflow using the high dynamic range environments. In fact, this is 100% Blender tutorial, so ta-da! You won't need anything besides Blender to set up the lighting like this. That is so mysterious, just take a look at it. Just like you're watching the Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So what exactly will we learn? First of all, we're going to be taking a look at the high dynamic range environments, high dynamic range panoramas, and how they can be used to illuminate your 3D objects. Also, we'll talk about uh, 32 bits high dynamic range images and how they compare to the 8 bit low dynamic range images. And finally, we'll take a look at the filmic view transform or the filmic color management to just push the realism over the top. All right, let's get started with the uh, image based lighting basics. We're going to use this cool fantasy clock model, and you can download it by following the link in the description of the video. Or if you have already got the course on Gumroad, just check the email from Gumroad and follow the link. And basically, you will see something like this, and at the bottom, you will see project files. Just click on surprise, the download button, and after a few seconds, you will have the project files zip archive. It contains all the project files, including the clock model. You just have to unzip it. Right click, extract here, usual business. So if you'd like to follow along the tutorials, go ahead, open Blender and open the clock model underscore 01A. Here I have Blender 2.78.4 and I'm clicking File, Open, navigating to the folder with the project files and opening the clock model. All right, hopefully that will make the process of following along the tutorials a little bit easier. And one more thing that I'd like to mention is that we use Filmic Blender Color Management. We'll talk about that and how you can install it in the third chapter of this series. So if you'd like to install the Filmic Blender, feel free to check chapter number three. Okay, so here we have this awesome high poly model of the clock. And if you take a look at the materials, it's a bunch of a very, very simple shaders, like the diffuse material mixed with the glossy material, something like that. Okay, so let's create this additional window. We'll use it to show the node editor later on. And let's switch this bottom window to the rendered viewport mode. And we'll keep it like this for the rest of the tutorial, basically. That will allow us to see in the real time what we are doing. And that's always kind of nice to see what you're doing. Let's now come over to the environment settings. And you can see that our environment color is gray and the strength is set to 1. We can lower the strength. So we have set up very basic lighting using just gray environment. But let's take a look at what the image based lighting is. Let's create a plane. Press G to move it over here. You can press R to rotate it. I selected the active element at the pivot point for the rotation. I'm pressing R to rotate the plane, G to move it again. Now I'm hitting S and Z to scale it on the Z axis. This will be our softbox, so to speak. Uh, let's come over to the Materials tab, press New to create the new material, and right away let's rename it to something meaningful like Light Texture, for example. Now let's click and drag this corner to create yet another window. This will be our node editor, so click on this button and select Node Editor. Press N to hide this right tool shelf. What we can do now to transform this plane into the light source is delete this diffuse shader by pressing X. Now go Shift A, Shader, and add Emission Shader. Connect it to the surface input of the material output. And what we can do now is press Shift A to invoke this menu and select Texture, Image Texture. Now comes the exciting part. You can Click Open, navigate to a folder with textures, you can click this button to preview textures, select it, click Open Image or just double click on the image, and you can use it as a texture for the light source. Ray, we created a very primitive image based light source. Let's select it, hit Tab to enter the edit mode, hit U and select Unwrap. This will create the UV map for our image, but apparently something is very wrong with it. It has a wrong orientation. Let's open the UV image editor, select this light texture. Now press R and rotate this image like this. You can hold the control key to snap it to the 90 degrees intervals. Now it looks right to me. And this texture, when used together with the emission shader, starts to illuminate the object. That's gorgeous. We can go back to the node editor and crank up the strength, for example, if we want to make it brighter. 
Now the Blender Render Engine Cycles is using these color values to illuminate the scene. So this is the basic idea behind uh, the image-based lighting, that you use texture, that you use image or photo to illuminate the object. Of course, when we say image-based lighting, we usually mean panorama, 360 degrees panorama, but technically this is also image-based lighting. Let me show you one more example. Hit Shift A, select lamp, spotlight, grab it and move it over here, rotate it like this, so the light rays hit the clock. In the light settings, we can increase the strength. Let's click and set it to 10,000. And let's come over to the node editor. Press Shift A, select texture, image texture again. Let's choose this light texture 01 that we used earlier and connect it over here. By using the textures inside the spotlight, we create so-called throw pattern. But for now, let's add the texture coordinate node because we'll need the normal output. Let's connect it over here. And also, let's hit Shift A and add in the mapping node. Mapping node can be used uh, to control the rotation and the scale and actually the location of the texture. Now I'm clicking and dragging down on the scale to activate X, Y and Z and then I'm dragging left or right depending on whether I want to increase or decrease the values. And if you drag the light source, you can see how it affects the throw pattern. Ta-da! This is the image-based lighting too. Hooray, hooray! And when we explored this primitive stuff, let's move on to the more advanced things. Like setting up the environment texture, the actual 360 degrees spherical panorama, which will be used eventually to illuminate the scene. Let's set the strength of uh, the environment back to 1. And let's click on this world icon to enter the environment settings. And I think I don't need this left window, so I'm gonna click and drag to the right, then drag to the left and release the mouse button. And it's gone. Now let's add the texture. Press Shift A, go texture, environment texture. This will be our 360 degrees panorama. It can be mirror ball or equirectangular. In a moment, I'll explain these settings, but for now, let's click open. Click this preview icon and these are the AGRIs by Greg Zal. I'm going to select the glass passage. And that is what is called the spherical panorama. It will be mapped onto the environment sphere, so to speak. And it will light our scene from every possible direction. By the way, you can just check out the Greg's website, hdriheaven.com. We can browse through the huge collection of HDRIs. There are free images among them with limited resolution. And also, Greg has given us some 2K images to include with this crash course. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And what I also love about 21st century is that we can preview the HDRIs in full 360 degrees preview thing. If only we had the adjustable exposure setting, that would be even more awesome. But probably it's too cumbersome to implement on the web, but at least you can get a grasp of the full environment this way. Mm -hmm. One more place to check for HDRIs is Blender Cloud. You can visit it at cloud.blender.org. That is a subscription-based service, so you have to pay for the subscription but they have a pretty sizable collection of 32-bit images. So if you maybe already have Blender Cloud account, you can check it out. And again, they have this very cool 360 degrees preview right inside your browser. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to our Blender scene. Let's open this Glass Passage HDR. So once you choose the Glass Passage, let's double click on it. And hook it up to the color socket of the background shader. After we did it, we can press Shift F uh, to look around, to actually take a look at our panorama. I choose a low resolution version, just 1K pixels wide. Later on, we'll replace it with a high resolution HDRI. Alright, folks, that was the equirectangular environment. Now let's click open and select this Kitchen by James Candy. Thanks, James. This is what is called a light probe. You can shoot a light probe by using the Christmas ball or just some other reflective ball. This is just the half of the environment. So it's a little bit easier to shoot than the rectangular panorama, but at the same time, it's less cool. It's less cool. Uh, to use it, we have to switch the projection to mirror ball. And if we now press Shift F and take a look around, we'll notice 
that for some parts of the image it looks okay, but it has uh, some weird artifact at the back of the image. Press Shift F and look around and bam! <laughs> this is it. That definitely looks like a glitch in Matrix. But all in all, you can use the light probes as well for illuminating the scene. There's nothing wrong with it except that it sucks. Let's switch to the glass passage and back to the rectangular mode. I will turn down the strength and set it back to 10 or maybe to 5. I try to avoid the overexposed or clipped parts. Once again, let's add the texture coordinate node together with the mapping node to be able to control the rotation of the HDRI. Add vector mapping and connect the generated output over here and drag this output in here. And later on, we'll be having fun with rotating the HDRI, I promise. I promise you. Just wait a little while till we explore the high dynamic range basics and what it is and what can you do with it. Right, the 8 bit and the 16 bit images, like JPEGs, can store color values from black to white, where white is the brightest point that a monitor can display. They cannot be brighter than that, they are clamped. Because of that, 8 bit and 16 bit images are display referred. Their only difference is that 16-bit images more faithfully represent this range between black and white. It has a higher fidelity, but it's still clumped. On the contrary, 32-bit images work in a completely different way. 32-bit images go from 0 to 1, where 1 is white, but then they go to 4, to 8, to 32, to 156, and on and on and on. They can store an insanely high range of luminosity, which goes far beyond the brightness of the LCD display. So 32-bit images like HDR or EXR can represent the real-life light values. The high dynamic range images are usually merged from photos with different exposures, because no single photo can capture all the details in shadows and in the highlights. So the multiple photos are needed to capture the contrast between the darkest pixels in the shadows and the brightest pixels in the sun. In fact, the contrast ratio between the darkest point of an HDR image and the brightest point can be as high as 100 million to 1. That's insanity. And we can use this insanely high dynamic range to illuminate the scene. Now that's the technology. Mm -hmm. Now let's create a camera. Position it where you want. Uh, press Ctrl, Alt and 0 on the numpad to align this camera to view. Next, let's click this border checkbox to constrain the render region only to what camera sees. And in the camera settings, increase this passport to alpha. You know that space outside the camera borders bothers me. I want to concentrate on the main object. Okay, and let's switch to the rendered mode. Press Shift F and use WASD keys like in the first person shooter to navigate around. And what else you're gonna do is come over to the performance tab and change the X and Y tile size to 256 because it will make the render so much faster on GPU. If you have GPU, of course. Now I'm hitting render. And if you now click anywhere in the rendered view, you can check out the readout of the pixel value. For example, now we sampled a pretty dark pixel. It says 0 0.03 on the red channel, 0 0.01 on the green channel, and so on. Now let's try something different. Let's try sample this very bright region, and instantly you see what high dynamic range means. Because it says red 103, green 98. That's the pretty darn bright pixels. Far brighter than one, than white. Let's now try jumping into the scene tab, and let's uh, drag the exposure to the left. Let's reduce the exposure. And as we're doing it, you can see that the bright pixels remain bright. Because, yeah, that's their real luminosity value. That's how they should behave in the real world. And this panorama by Greg Zal just represents this high dynamic range. Alright, guys, I hope that makes sense. Let's bring back this project to zero. Click on it and type zero or just click and drag. And for the sake of comparison, I want to use the JPEG, the 8-bit image, as the environment. Let's open the node editor. This is the 32-bit HDR. Let's click open and select this JPEG image instead. Once again, this is the 8-bit texture. It doesn't have any color values beyond 1, beyond white. Let's hit render. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
wait for a little while. And if you now click on this bright spot, you'll see that the intensity of this pixel is 5, but that's only because the strength of our environment is set to 5. That makes sense. Let's set it back to 1, because it just ruined my calculations. And hit render again, or just hit F12. Holy moly, I thought it was ruined. But no, no, no. If you now click, you'll notice that it doesn't go beyond 1. And that's the main difference between 8-bit images and 32-bit images. Low dynamic range and high dynamic range. If we now reduce the exposure, you'll notice that the whole image is becoming darker. Definitely, that will look awful as a light source, so let's stick to 32-bit high dynamic range images. I really hope that makes sense, all these numbers, but that is really important. Let's go back to the node editor by pressing Shift F3. And don't forget to switch back to an HDR image.